the very first one we were signed to Go Discs. We were in Ireland, I think, recording some B-sides, and uh, we got a call from the record company saying, guys, can you record a Christmas single? Let's release a Christmas single. We thought, great, yeah, sure. So when we got back to London, it's actually it's one of those things that bands really, really hate. When you have to sit in their offices and they, they have the little record company stereo and everyone comes around and they hear um, the stuff you just recorded. Bands dread it. I used to dread that, to like the playing. So anyway, so we sat down and everyone is there, the MD, the NR, the PR, the blah blah blah, and um, let's hear the Christmas song. Everyone really excited about the Christmas song and so we put driving on and when he ended, um, it was this deadly silence and uh, Simon, who used to be our a and uh, turned to us and he said, guys, have you got any concept, any idea for what a Christmas single should be? And uh, I kind of ventured and I said, oh well, it's a song that has the word Christmas in it, that's it, right? <laughs> and he said, no! It's meant to be happy, it's meant to be jolly, it's the festive season. Driving is the most depressing song I've ever heard. We can't release it as a Christmas single, it's a suicidal song. There's just no way we can release it. So, so there was a little, a little bit of a situation. And uh, Andy, who was uh, the president of the of Go Discs and a really cool guy, he said, okay, but why don't we give it away to the fan club instead and just press it on vinyl? I thought that was genius, you know, just turning a negative situation into a really cool thing. To me, that was almost like an inspired moment. So that's how you guys ended up getting that driving uh, Christmas freebie, is because we failed to write a, a commercial, happy, jolly Christmas song. following year, by that point, uh, Go Discs had invested, I don't know, something like half a million dollars on us. So there's a little bit of pressure building up and we got another call from the record company and uh, saying this time we want a commercial Christmas single, guys. None of that gloomy, raining, driving on the motorway and your life is about to end. We want a happy sing-along song. So Godis took, uh, took us to another expensive studio, right, let's record a commercial Christmas song, the sing-along hit of the season. <laughs> and so we recorded uh, Christmas at the drugstore. So anyway, so this was like really expensive recording. It got one radio play and the funniest thing is I was in my kitchen in the uh, flat I used to have in, in, in this London in Poplar so I turned the radio on and it was one of those uh, round table things where they're playing the singles of the season the Christmas singles and ours came on and it was totally slapped off <laughs> and I just sat in my kitchen thinking oh well I tried <laughs> I wrote the suicide the one they didn't like it. I write a happy song they don't like it. What whatever. <laughs> so the following year, I wrote a Christmas in the Arctic Pole, which goes like this. I got a big bird in the oven And I'm wearing my very best suit And I've just been down to the drugstore And loaded up the house with booze All my friends are coming over We're gonna sit around and watch TV We're gonna have such a big hangover By the time the queen makes her speech So here we go
Simon, who was an a was sitting with us, and I played him my demo, and he loved it. He was, hey, this is a cool song. So let's take you guys to the studio and get it recorded properly. With an orchestra, we can get a choir of little kids singing the la 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 la. And I was like, no way, man, the demo is perfect. We don't want to make it bigger. The whole point of the song is about, you know, small people uh, having a little bit of happiness at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we ended up having this disagreement. Um, and he turned to us and said, well, if you don't want to re record it, we ain't going to release it. The truth is, at that point, Goldisks had spent something like four hundred thousand pounds on us, and we sold. I don't know. We had sold around one hundred twenty thousand copies, which was uh, for them uh, just not enough. You know, they wanted more. What's wrong with one hundred twenty thousand? To me, that is a huge amount. But they wanted more, so they, they there was a little bit of pressure. So Christmas in the Arctic Cold was never released by Goldies. I've got a big bird in the oven, and I'm wearing my very best suit. And I've just been down to the drugstore and loaded up the house with booze. They say to have the perfect Christmas. Man, you gotta have a lot of snow. Oh, the only way to get round this one, the Christmas in the Arctic Pole. <laughs> Fast forward a few years, uh, I think it was um, in 2000, um, December, we were having a, a, a band break, everyone was away, it was on my own, and I had a call from Adrian Boss, who used to be our manager, um, saying XFM are doing a Christmas compilation album, and I think it would be great for us to get a truck. Um, so I told Adrian, I, have, I haven't got a Christmas song, but hey, I'll, I'll write one. So then I asked him, so when, when do, we, do we need it by? <laughs> well, it's Christmas Eve. Uh, the 813 is really quite bad today. So uh, the deadline is five o'clock. Uh, so I'm going to be sending you a, a, a courier at four o'clock. And so wait a second. This is, it's 10 o'clock in the morning now. You're telling me you're sending me a courier at 4 o'clock in the afternoon today? <laughs> it's, it's crazy! It's crazy! <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, just, just, you know, just rustle up some acoustic Christmas thingy. I said, just no way I can't do it. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I have to deliver a song at 4. He said, oh, come on, Isabel, you can do it, you can do it, whatever. So, put the phone down and it was like this crazy rush getting the Porta Studio out, where's my tuner, where's my leaf song, song, Christmas thing, Christmas thing, Santa, think sleigh bells, think snow. And uh, so I ended up recording um, maybe at Christmas time, really quickly on my Porta Studio. And funnily enough, you know, there's a lesson here. Uh, the previous single, the Christmas at the Drugstore, the one the Gold Discs has spent a thousand on it, got one radio play. Um, Maybe at Christmas time, the XFM compilation that I did um, in, I don't know, four hours in my party studio, and it cost the price of a bike courier in London, probably, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds, 30 pounds with a Christmas tip. It ended up um, not only on a great compilation, it's one of the best Christmas compilations ever, but it, it got picked up by a, a series on Channel 4 uh, called Teachers. Whatever. And they had a Christmas special and they released the soundtrack of teachers. So that one song that cost 25 pounds <laughs> generated a fair amount of Christmas gifts for drugstore. Funny guy. Yes. 
Christmas time. Right, the next song is the one I uh, recorded last year, which was Snowballs. I quite liked it because I thought it had a bit of a James Taylor feel about it. I, I could almost imagine James Taylor, 1975, with Carly Simon uh, wearing this mini skirt Santa outfit at his feet. Anyway, I ended up shooting that little video and I got, I think, totally pissed. Uh, I had a bottle of babies and a bottle of port. I thought we were going to do it with the band, but they were all busy, no one turned up. So at each date I, I was getting progressively drunker. So by the time I got to do the lip syncing, <laughs> there was just no way I was going to do a decent job, right? And that thing, you know, that thing when Santa flies into the head, guys, that was my lottery moment. I might as well give up on happiness because it's just no way I'm ever going to have a moment like that. That was my once in a lifetime moment. Well, I've seen the picture in the Christmas book where all the people gather round and they were making snow. Coming up in the new year, and I hope to see you then.